Hi, I'm Mike Hodgetts from Delving Designs, and in this tutorial for Blender, I want to have a look at three quick tips for improving the photorealism of your models and your renders. In the real world, there is no such thing as a perfect 90 degree angle. If you have a look at this kitchen cabinet model that we have here, all of the edges are perfect 90 degrees. Um, this is impossible in the real world. You know, you would slice your hand completely open by just running it along the surface of this kitchen counter. Um, everything that you see around you has an ever so slight bevel to that edge. So if we compare this version of the model to this one, all of these edges have ever so slight bevels on them. Um, and this is achieved with a bevel modifier, which I have set really low to just one millimeter with four segments. Um, and this really helps just to round out those edges and create the gaps between surfaces that you would see um, even when you've got two pieces such as this, two pieces of wood pressed together. It's really gonna help to accentuate the, um, the glancing angles of your edges uh, when you have a look at your shaders. Just as in the real world there's no perfect 90 degree angles, it's also incredibly rare that you get a perfectly clean surface. Um, almost everything around us has tiny amounts of dirt or dust and scratches and incorporating that into your shaders can really help to improve the realism. If we have a look at the texturing of this kitchen cabinet, um, it's all done with a basic PBR workflow. If we have a look at this marble, uh, the marble has a colour map, a gloss map, which has been inverted to a roughness map, um, and a normal map. If we look at the angle of this against the light, we can see that you know the, the light is reflecting off of the marble. But if we look at this version, our second one, you can see that that light is now being broken up by these stains and smudges. That is coming from this surface imperfection map, which shows all of these scratches and grime and dust. Um, if you don't have one of these sorts of maps, you can find them online, but you could also just use a, a procedural noise texture, and that would also work perfectly fine. I've ran this through a map range node um, just to increase the, uh, the strength of it, uh, going from zero to one to zero to three. And then to incorporate that into our PBR workflow, I've included a mix RGB node, which has been set to screen and screened it over the top of our glossy map. Uh, likewise, I've also included some scratches on the inside parts of the doors here. Um, and that is done a little bit slightly more complicated, but I've got a scratch map uh, just with some scratches and scruff, uh, scuffs that again, I've run through a map range node to control the strength because at one, it was a little bit too strong. And then to create this edged wear effect, I've uh, run that through used a bevel node that again has been done through a map range which will give you the almost like the outlines of this you can also use a um, geometry uh, pointiness and run this through either a map range or a color ramp but I personally find that the bevel node um, just gives you a bit better um, edge detection, especially if you don't have a huge amount of geometry, um, you know, the bevel node can really help. You could also mix these two together if you wanted to take it even further. If you'd like a more in-depth tutorial on edge wear and surface imperfection, then please do let me know in the comments below. So I've run the bevel, multiplied the bevel by the scratches multiplied that by our original bump map and then run that into the bump node which gives us these nice scratches on the inside of the door and the scuffs and just you can really obviously take this as far as you want with adding lots and lots of scratches and dirt and dust and grime 
um, but a lot of the time less can be more you don't want to overdo it with these things otherwise unless you're obviously trying to make a really beaten up piece of you know furniture or a really kind of scruffy model um, in terms of the dirt you know but you want to incorporate at least some of these things even if you're going for a you know a clean look You can have a really great model with amazing textures, but if you do not light your scene correctly, you're not going to achieve the levels of photorealism that you might want. I've added our kitchen cabinet into a little scene here with some scene fillers and a window, um, and it's being lit by a single HDRI. But you can see that it looks very dark. Um, we can, of course, increase the strength of our HDRI. If I just bump this up to two, um, but I personally find that the better way of dealing with low lighting levels is with the exposure settings and the colour management um, directly in your scene rather than cranking your HDRI up to an unreasonable level. If we go to our um, render tab down to the bottom, we've got our colour management settings. Now firstly, we can choose our look and change this to maybe a medium high contrast and we can increase the exposure levels, maybe drop the gamma a little bit until we get a more pleasing result um, that's going to light our scene in a better way. We can also go to our camera and make sure that we have depth of field enabled and that we choose a either a focus object or that we set the distance manually uh, to see where our depth of field is. Um, again, it's subtle, but depth of field is definitely something that you do want to include uh, when you are looking to try to create photorealistic rendering. If we open up uh, another file, which is the this exact same scene, uh, but with a few adjustments, and we have a look at this, we can see that this looks much, much nicer. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, firstly, if we have a look at the scene itself and have a look at what we've included and added to this. First of all, I've added an area light, which is the size of the window. Um, and in the light settings, I've checked portal. This isn't increasing or adding any light to our scene, but instead by using a portal, it's telling Blender where the light is coming from, which can cut down on the noise levels in your scene. I've also added a sun lamp, which you can see in the rotation, I've rotated to line up with the HDRI, so that the shadows are matching. And again, if we go into rendered view, and I turn off the sun lamp, you can see that the difference that this can make. Again, it's subtle, but adding a sun lamp that's rotated correctly to match your shadows, it just makes those shadows pop a little bit harder. In addition, there is one other thing that I would highly recommend that you look into if you are interested in photorealistic rendering, and that is the photographer add-on. It's $24, um, and it is a fantastic add-on that I use in almost every single one of my renders, um, because it allows you to set a, a lot of different uh, settings but the one in particular that I really like is not only the post um, the like post processing uh, effects, which adds compositing on top of your uh, rendering, but it also allows you to change the camera settings to work exactly like a physical camera, where we can control the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. Um, and this is actually going to automatically correct our exposure and gamma settings. And we can see just by changing a few of these settings, you know, the drastic difference in our lighting. We haven't changed the lighting strength of our HDRI or anything like that. All we've done 
is change the exposure levels that we have set to um, these settings, which, as I said, mimic the way that a real camera works. I hope that this was useful for you. Um, and just to recap, make sure that you're adding bevels to your models, you're adding surface imperfections to your textures, and that you are lighting your scenes in a correct manner by either adding uh, other lamps um, and not just relying solely on a HDRI, but also by controlling your exposure levels either directly through the color management settings or with the photographer add-on. I hope that this uh, tutorial was useful for you. Look forward to seeing all of your amazing renders and hopefully catch you in the next tutorial. Thanks.